Hey guys, what's up? Let's do another unbiased gear review. Today, we are taking a look at the cheapest fan fret 8 string that I could find. So first, let's go over the specs of this piece of shit. So, we have an ash body, a two-piece ash body from the looks of it, because there's only one seam over here. We have a five-piece neck, which looks to be mahogany and something else. It looks like rosewood, but I really doubt it. We've got a rosewood fretboard, 24 frets, a fan fret multi-scale design, We've got locking tuners, which barely do the job. We've got a single saddle bridge design, two no-name fucking humbuckers, master volume, master tone, and a three-way toggle switch. So you might be asking yourself, Arnold, why are you reviewing something that's kind of a no-name guitar? Well, you know, we are always perusing Reverb and eBay, we as guitar players... I mean, and we're always looking for something that's interesting or a good deal or just something something cheap to kind of dip our toe into something. And I thought, you know what, let me take one for the team here. Let me go ahead and purchase something that I saw on eBay so that we could see if it's actually worth a fuck. Um, so I've actually had good luck buying Made in China instruments before. I'm not one of those people that believes that everything that comes from a certain country is garbage or whatever. I think it's down to the level of craftsmanship that goes into it. Pick up one of the Dingwall combustion models and you'll see what I mean. Those things are made in China. Yeah, final assembly and quality control is done in Canada, but the parts themselves are made in China and they are top fucking notch instruments. Another example for you is I did a review on the cheapest six-string fan fret guitar I could find, which was the Hayes model, and I'm going to post that link right here so that you guys can look that up if you so desire. But that guitar was actually surprisingly well-built. It Don't get me wrong, it wasn't a thousand dollar quality instrument that I got for 300 bucks or anything, but it was definitely well worth the money, maybe even a little more so. This instrument uh, was found on eBay for about 320 if I remember right. And wow, this is an absolute dog of an instrument. Holy shit, we've got a lot of things to go over as to why this guitar kind of sucks. So the first thing that let me know that this might be a negative experience for me um, was a about two weeks after I'd ordered this guitar on eBay, a first happened for me, which was that after I ordered it, then the seller changed the, the description. So, like, if you were to look at the exact listing that I purchased this instrument from, it now shows a completely different guitar. It shows one with kind of like a walnut-looking top and a straight scale to it. Still an 8-string, and still manufactured by the same factory, I assume, but a completely different instrument. 
So I was a bit perplexed. That's the first time I've ever seen that. I got in touch with eBay customer service. They told me not to worry. I'm entitled to the guitar I paid for and they could see, thankfully, that the seller had changed the description and the photos after I had made my purchase. So they assured me that if anything happened, I was taken care of. Cool. Awesome. I also emailed the seller and let them know, hey, I noticed this. Just want to make sure I'm getting the correct instrument. And they said, yes, absolutely. You're getting one with the transparent blue burst. Okay, cool. Thank you. <sighs> All right. So first mini heart attack kind of sort of resolved. Uh, the second thing was when it arrived, and I wish I had taken pictures of this because I was in awe of how crazy this was. It did not arrive in a box of any sort. No cardboard to be found. No, it came in a molded piece of foam that this thing was sitting in, along with a few other goodies. The typical shit that you get from a real cheap piece of junk instrument, like the cheap 10-foot cable and, you know, warranty information or whatever. Um, a set of, like, cheap, junky Allen wrenches. But... Basically, this guitar just kind of wrapped in a foam padding and then kind of nestled in like kind of like a styrofoam looking container. Really, really weird. And it was a bitch to get into, too. But whatever. You know, the guitar seemed to arrive in uh, a OK condition. So I guess it actually works for the sake of shipping it. Now, that being said, when I say it arrived in a OK condition, I mean, as far as, like, there's no obvious damage from shipping. However, this thing has got a load of things wrong with it. First of all, let's just get right to the thing that always pisses me off, the fretwork. I want you to take a look at my hand right there, and at this point right now, I'm going to also post a little picture of my finger so that you can see that is what the fretwork has done to my hand. Oh my god, it is sharp. This is like... Probably number three on my top worst fret dressing list. Uh, not many things that I've found that are worse than this. Maybe Chad's Egenberg and something from Klaas from Germany are probably the only two instruments that I've ever found with worse fret edges than this. Um, th they're just super sharp. You can tell that they weren't even filed down at all. When you actually look at the frets, it's really weird. Like, I'll show another picture right here. You can actually see that some of the higher frets are slotted at an angle. So they're not going in straight into the wood. Meanwhile, another one that's right next to it is going in straight. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. And there's plenty of binding all around the body, all around the headstock, and also all around the fretboard which on a lot of these cheaper instruments, the binding is actually something good because it tends to mask the shitty fret dressing so that you can still get a somewhat playable instrument. Take a look at an Ibanez ARZ-307, for example, an instrument that I think is woefully underrated. Typically, Ibanez models in that price point have rough fret edges, but that guitar, I haven't found one yet of those models that has a bad fret end on it because the binding on the edge of the board tends to mask the fret dressing a little bit. It, it actually serves a purpose. This guitar right here, it definitely does not serve any sort of beneficial purpose for masking the fret ends like that. Moving away from the horrible fret dressing and the horrible fret crowning, because yeah, this thing buzzes a ton in certain spots too. Let's see, we've got the nut right here. The nut is actually not too bad as far as the ends go. They're actually sitting pretty flush, which is not so bad. But if you look at the actual slots, they're very jagged. Like, it looks like someone used a very dull tool to slot this nut. That is a little concerning. Um, you take a look at the finish work, or even like where the binding is attached and you can definitely tell there's like all this epoxy that's in between uh the wood and the binding it's very uneven it's extremely noticeable more noticeable than on any other guitar i've ever seen in my life let's see the wood on the back of the guitar there's a lot of marks 
on the wood, a lot of places that you can see where there's epoxy filling in the, um, the different spaces and the little nicks and dents from when the instrument was made. Um, there's a lot of that going on, if you can see right there. Now, there again, that's not something that you can feel. This guitar arrived in brand new condition. That is literally how they decided to fix the issue of there being dents and dings in it before it was sanded and finished. They just filled it with epoxy and sanded over it and finished over it. Um, looking at the neck joint, some of the worst gaps I've ever seen on a bolt-on neck. Uh, attaching the neck to the body, it's just... It's supposed to fit in there pretty snug so that you still get plenty of sustain from the instrument. And there are some extremely noticeable gaps on both sides. It's really quite awful, to be perfectly frank with you. It's weird when you look at it because not only does it have those gaps, but for lack of a better way of describing it, it just looks dirty in there. It looks like they didn't wipe away the excess wood dust from when they were sanding it. But when you go over it with your hand, no, that is, it, it's completely clean. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just, there again, more epoxy that was filled into the dings and dents, and it was just sanded over and finished over. Whew, boy. Okay. Speaking of finish work, let's move on to that. Rub your hand all over the body. You can definitely tell they didn't sand this thing smooth before they finished it. There's lots of little burrs and stuff that are kind of poking through. Um, what's really awful, you can definitely tell that they didn't mask this sucker off very well. All over the place, you're just finding like all these little stains in the wood that you can tell is from spraying the top, but... They just didn't mask it off completely, so there's a little bit of blue right here, a little bit right there, um, a whole lot of it along the beveled edge right here that they just didn't mask off at all, so there's like blue that's just kind of seeping into the wood. What'd they do? They just finished right over it. It looks tacky as shit. Looking at the pickup routings, man, these are some jagged, jagged pickup routings. Oh, man. Like, dents and dings that they didn't even bother to fill in with the epoxy. Nothing is sanded super smooth. It's just really, really raw and rough looking. Uh, looking at the bridge. Now, this particular bridge... I actually really like this single saddle bridge design. I think it sits pretty flat. It's got a nice low profile to it, so it feels good when you're palm muting up against it. And quite frankly, I wish that more manufacturers use this. You know, I've seen on like a bunch of like Agile stuff and even some of the Jackson fan fret stuff, they're using these really kind of open and sparse single saddle bridge designs. I actually really, really, really dig this design, and I wish they would incorporate this into more instruments from slightly more uh, more reputable manufacturers. You know, but that's one thing that I like about these Chinese uh, fan fret instruments is that particular bridge. That being said... As you can see, it would be really, really awesome if they could install it fucking straight. Now, I know, haha ha, joke, it's a fan fret instrument, it's not supposed to be straight. But, like, you can definitely see that there's saddles that are just sitting kind of crooked as opposed to parallel. It's really, really weird, it's really unsightly, and it's just really a basic thing with these individual saddles. Like, come on, spend a little bit of time, use a template, get it right, man. Ugh, that's, that's just terrible, in my opinion. Again, looking at the binding all around the body, more of the same from up at the headstock. There's just tons of epoxy that's shooting through, tons of little buildup along those sides, too. The electronics are a little inconsistent. You've got a volume knob that is very, very nice, rolls fairly well. But then the tone knob is super sticky. Like, I wouldn't even say super sticky. It's just very slow rolling. The pickups. Okay, let's get into the pickups. The pickups sound 
exactly how you would expect from this instrument. Which is to say, pretty goddamn awful. They're noisy. Like, if you can hear that that's going on. I mean, I've got my noise gate at pretty much the same setting that I always have it at. You know, it's up about maybe like 10 o'clock, which is usually just perfect to get most of this hiss and out of there. But there's still a little bit of it coming through. Um, they sound like absolute mush and mud. thin, very weak sounding neck pickup. Oh, that fret buzz is killing me a little bit. just sounds kind of bland it sounds kind of ugly and really everything about this instrument is well that's just kind of the best way to describe this just kind of bland just kind of ugly not really a whole lot of finer points practically the only redeeming quality I can find about it is that bridge I really like that bridge everything else is kind of meh like you can definitely tell this was not put together with care. It was put together just to throw up on eBay, sell for a cheap price, and get rid of it. Oh, God. There's just so many problems with this thing. You know, and it sucks because it's modeled after uh, a little bit nicer instrument. Like, when I first got this thing, I had a few very, very confused people ask me, Oh, did you get Travis's Scurve? And no, I did not get Travis's Scurve. Um, despite my misgivings about Skurvison, I think that I would have been much, much, much happier about that brand, uh, about playing that instrument. This thing is just kind of a piece of garbage. There's not really anything else I can say about this. I can't wait to get rid of this. So I guess the main takeaway is buyer beware. Um, there's definitely some good... Chinese manufactured instruments that are out there. I know I've had my hands on a few that have been extremely well put together, extremely great to play. This is not one of them. This is just kind of an awful instrument and I'm just happy to be done with it. So I know what you're thinking. Arnold, what are you drinking today? Well, I am having this from Pelican Brewing. I am having Captain of the Coast, the 2017 bottle. Pours kind of a reddish copper color. A bit of a tan head to it. Mmm. Has a kind of a fruity aroma to it. Ooh, that's fantastic. This is, it's it's very boozy. You've got uh, a nice caramel flavor to it, a little bit of brown sugar, peat, um, a lot of whiskey uh, in there. It, you can definitely tell it's barrel aged. 
Mm. Wow. That's really rich, complex. Got a little bit of tartness that hits you back here in the cheekbones a little bit. Very good. I highly recommend this. Pelican Brewing, Captain of the Coast, We Heavy Ale, aged in bourbon barrels. So with that, like this video, subscribe to this channel. There's many more reviews to come. Um, I'm bleeding for you so that you don't have to. And yeah, find me on Facebook, give my page a like. Find me on Untapped to give that a like. And stick around, there's many more videos to come.